Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I am answering some of the questions that I've gotten from you. As you ask me questions or comment on my videos, I take screenshots and save them so I can put them all in a video and answer them all for you at the same time. So I think I have about nine or 10 questions and without further ado, <laughs> who says ado? <laughs> but anyway, let's start with number one. And this is regarding fondant cake toppers. Let's say you have to make a 3D number topper on the cake. Do you have to make it overnight to dry out and use it? Or can you make it and put it on top of the cake at the same time? And it really depends on how hard your fondant is. I actually have done both. Now, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I put Gum-Tex powder, Tylose powder, CMC powder. It's all basically the same thing. I'm sure some of you can recite this with me because I say it in almost every video. <laughs> I only use marshmallow fondant. I find that using store-bought fondant, it's store-bought fondant, <laughs> store-bought fondant is a little too soft. And I feel like even adding this um, Gum-Tex powder, it doesn't dry hard enough. That's why I just prefer to make my own marshmallow fondant. I have videos showing you how I do that and I will link it below. But if my fondant is really hard to start off with, then I can make the number topper and pretty much stick it on top of the cake the same day. I'm going to need to let it dry for probably at least four to five hours so it can stiffen up a little bit and hold its shape and it won't droop. But for the most part, I prefer to make my toppers a day or two before so it has time to really dry hard. And what I like to do, I've said this in videos before, I'll make it one day and then the next day I'll flip it over so the backside can be exposed to the air and that can dry really hard. And then if I let it sit out another day, I'll flip it over one more time. So that way the back and the front can get really dry and it's really gonna hold its shape. Now I have in, in tons of my videos, I show you how I make stand up cake toppers and I will try to find some of them and link them below. On to question number two. And this says, can you talk about how you might decide to decline future services to a problem client and how you would communicate that to them after resolving a complaint? I'm talking about the person who is happy with the resolution and calls you up later for another order. Should you just say you don't have availability or bluntly tell them that you don't want to serve them again or what? What about saying, I'm glad we got this issue resolved, but please understand that we are not a good match for future services. So I've been in this position quite a few times and there are times that I have taken on the order again and there are times that I have completely declined the customer's request. And I'll tell you about both situations. So I had a client who ordered a cake and she mishandled it. Wait, I'm gonna get mad even thinking about it. <laughs> but she, the cake ended up falling apart. She tried to blame me. I know it was her fault, but I ended up just taking it, taking one for the team and refunding the money and whatever. But she was very happy with the way that I resolved that situation. And she wasn't an a-hole about it, you know? Like she was very kind, but it was just an unfortunate situation and I learned a lot from it. I.e. never let someone just pick up a cake and just go running errands forever with it and think that it's going to survive. But anyway, uh, she did contact me for another cake order. And while I was a little hesitant to take it, I took on the order, but I took more control. And I did make her aware that she cannot just pick up the cake and drive around with it. You must take it right to the venue or to your house or wherever the party is going to be or have it delivered. And yes, I took on another risk thinking that she would mishandle the cake and do that all over again, but she didn't. Now on the flip side, to decline a customer request, sometimes, I don't wanna say you, you should lie to them, but sometimes little white lies and not being so bluntly truthful will bode well for you, if you will. <laughs> so I don't wanna just say to someone, I don't think we're a match and I can't do this for you and I don't wanna work with you because it's some people are going to get defensive when they hear something like that. So yes, you could either say something that you are booked or that you won't be around that week, you're going on vacation or you already have plans or you can politely turn them down and say something like, I'm not confident that I'm going to be able to execute your design to my standards and I don't feel comfortable taking on this cake, but I do have some cake friends in the area. They are on Instagram and Facebook and here's their information. You can contact them, hopefully someone can help you. And I have a few cake friends in the area. I have a bunch of people that I'm constantly referring out to for customers that I can't help. 
And then lastly, I do have people that I will never work with again. I actually have a, a customer that I worked with recently and she was a huge pain in my butt and she would not stop texting me over and over and over and over and over and oh my gosh. So I saved her in my phone as nope with a bunch of red X's and if she ever contacts me, I know not to answer it. I'm just going to avoid her or block her completely. On to number three. How do you stop a cake from leaking after icing it? So I think the best way to do this is to pipe a stiffened buttercream dam around the perimeter of each layer before you fill it with the filling. And that stiffened icing dam is gonna help prevent that filling from oozing out the sides. Now, after I fill the cake, I wrap it up in food safe plastic and let it settle overnight. Now, if you have a perishable filling, you're going to wanna speed up the settling process and I have a video showing you how I do that and I will link that below. But for the most part, I let it sit at room temperature overnight to settle because the cake is going to naturally settle down a little bit, which pushes that icing out the sides slightly. So after the cake settles, I remove the plastic and then I scrape the excess icing that's bulging out before I add a crumb coat. And a crumb coat is just a really thin layer of icing that I put on. And once I have that crumb coat on, I put it in the refrigerator for about four hours because I really want that icing to solidify before I add the final coat. And when I take the cake out of the refrigerator to add the final coat, sometimes you can see that that icing is still bulging out of the sides. But by adding this final coat after the crumb coat has hardened, it's going to hide or disguise those bulges and I found that when I do it this way I have the most success because those bulges aren't going to stick out anymore through that final top coat now I refrigerate all of my cakes so if you don't refrigerate your cakes you may have more of an issue I I've just always refrigerated my cakes since I started making them so that's all I know what to recommend so if you do not refrigerate your cakes you may want to do a little more research on to number four. I would love a video about running the business itself, like the license requirements, requirements, or laws about working from your own kitchen. That would be great. So I will tell you what I did in order to start my business. So years ago, one of my cake clients actually worked for a lawyer and in, in exchange for a few cakes, I was able to go down there and the lawyer set up my LLC for free. Now I know you can do it online and nowadays it's a little bit easier and I'm not sure how much it is, but I decided to set up an LLC to protect myself personally because if something were to happen, they would sue the LLC and my business and not me personally. So it does protect me and my assets. The next step was I got a business insurance and one of my friends from high school is an agent and when I was first starting out my business, he contacted me and I literally have had my insurance with him for about 20 years now. And I think right now it's about $100 a month, but it can vary depending on the coverage that you have. But if you're going to be making cakes from home and people order wedding cakes and have them at a venue, a lot of times those venues want to see that you are insured. So I'm constantly sending out my certificate of insurance. So my insurance is with the Hartford and I can put my agent's information in the description. However, you're going to want to shop around and see which company works for you. The next step, I'm just outside of Philly and where I live, you have to get a zoning variance or whatnot. I, I, I might not be saying it correctly, <laughs> but I had to go over to the township building and it was like another $75 fee or something. I had to fill out an application, let them know I have a cake business from home and basically this house has to be registered as a residential and a business. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. I might sound naive right now, <laughs> but it was super simple. I filled out the form and then they contacted me within like two weeks and told me that everything was good. And the last thing is to get a, an inspection. And this, is, this varies by state. In Pennsylvania, you need to have someone from the licensing department come out or from the health department come out to your house and inspect your kitchen. Now, all inspectors are different. I've had two different ones, and the first lady, she didn't even, she just kind of looked around my kitchen, and then I filled out some paperwork. The guy that came, he opened my oven, he tested my tap water, he looked in my refrigerators, and went over some of the rules with me, 
And I guess it, de it, it depends on the inspector that you have, how they will inspect your place. But again, not every state requires an inspection. Some states are more strict with their laws while some are more lenient. And there is a great website that you could check out. It's called forager.com and it will tell you all of the cottage food laws by state. So I'm going to link that in the description. On to number five. And this is a question I get asked a lot. Can you teach us how much fondant to use on different cake sizes? For instance, how many pounds did you start off with for the black tire fondant cake? I've been looking everywhere on the internet and I can't find a cheat sheet for covering my cake sizes with fondant. And I know I am no help in this, in this department because I do eyeball it. Now, when I make marshmallow fondant, it comes, here's all of my fondant. And this batch of marshmallow fondant is about two pounds. Now, I, whenever I have to cover a cake, I'm, I'll, I'll say I need to cover a seven inch cake and I break off like a little more than half. And I know that doesn't help you. So I did a little search online and I found that Wilton and Satin Ice do have some guidelines for you on how much fondant that you need to cover certain size cakes. So I would just base it off of that to give you a starting guide. And then as you're working with it more, you're going to learn how much that you need. Now I'm not always spot on when I do these estimates. I usually overestimate. So I end up having some extra fondant in the color that I was covering the cake. And when that happens, I store it in this little container and I did get this on Amazon. I could try to find it and link it below, but I have them all stored by color. I have pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, my neutrals. And what I do, I put them in a plastic bag and then I put that bag in this airtight container and I keep this sealed. And people ask me a lot, how long can you keep that fondant? And I always just keep it by, I do the squeeze test, if you will. So if I can squeeze it when it is still soft and it squeezes, it, it squeezes. <laughs> if I can put an imprint in it, I will still keep it. Sometimes it gets really rock hard when it's at room temperature. And I don't have any rock hard fondant to show you, but I'd be able to like knock it against here and it would make like a knock, a hard knocking sound. Then I know that it's time to throw it away. But as long as it's pliable while it's soft, I'm still able to use it. I'm just going to throw this away because I put my fingers all over it. So I will link those charts in the description for you. If anyone else knows of a good reference for how much fondant you need to cover cakes, please list that in the comments below. On to number six. Can you make a video talking about cake burnout in a cake decorator as a part-time hustle? And boy, I'm so tired. I have kids and I'm married, so maybe the kids make it harder, but God, I'm ready to quit again. And I totally understand where you're coming from. However, I'm not married and I don't have any kids, so I don't have the, those stresses in my life, but I do tend to take on all of the cakes that I can and I end up constantly working and sometimes it can drive me crazy, especially if I have back to back to back weeks of like six to 10 cakes, then I go crazy and I end up crying and I end up being so stressed. So I think that my best advice to you, which is advice that I need to take myself, <laughs> is to work in some slow weeks every now and then. Like last week I had one cake and it was wonderful. I was able to get so many other things done. So you don't have to take on every order that comes your way. I would say, especially since this is a part-time hustle for you, maybe just take on the cakes that you want to do and try not to stress yourself out too much about it. So if a theme comes your way, where it's just something you know that you're not gonna have fun doing or it's something that it's a little too challenging, maybe you could refer that out to someone else. So it's very important to take time for yourself. I try at least once a day, sometimes I don't get out, but I try to get outside at least once a day and I go to the gym a couple times a week just to keep my mind and my body right. On to question number seven. seven. <laughs> How do you stay in shape making all this cake? And you wouldn't believe how many times people have asked me this. And I don't want to sound like I'm bragging or anything like that. So I've always kind of avoided making a video about this. However, I am not in shape like I used to be. When I first started making videos and when I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I was 
a pole fitness teacher. I took pole fitness classes. I was a yoga teacher. I'm still a yoga teacher. And I was taking a bunch of yoga classes. And at one point I started working with a trainer and lifting really heavy. So I was working out probably 10 to 15 hours during the height of my fitness era, if you will. <laughs> so I look back on these old videos and I can see my arms and, and my biceps were popping and everything. And it's just not like that anymore. However, I do still stay relatively fit and I make sure, like I just said in the previous question, I make sure that I go to the gym three times a week. It just keeps my mind right. I just feel so much better when my body feels strong. So I learned a lot from my trainer and I do lift based on the things that I learned from him. However, I don't lift as heavy as I used to just because I don't want to get injured. I value my knees, I value my back, <laughs> and I just want to do it as safely as possible now. And also, a big part of it is you can't be eating all the cake scraps, okay? <laughs> There's a little bit of willpower that needs to, that you need to have in order to stay in shape while you're making cakes. Some people say that they eat all of the scraps that they have and you just can't do that. My neighbors love me. I'm constantly texting Jen. Hey, do you guys want some cake? My next door neighbor, the birds out back, <laughs> they get some cake, you know, when I'm leveling off the tops of the cakes. So I really try not to eat the cake. Now, sometimes you want to test it. You want to make sure that it's moist. You don't need a huge chunk in order to do that. You can just take a little bite. Most of the time, you can tell by the texture of the cake, by looking at it, by feeling it, if it's dry or not. And if you have to try every single cake that you make, then just take a little bite and spit it out in the trash can. Don't keep eating all of this cake because a little, a little bit of cake can have a lot of calories in it. So you just want to be really mindful about what you're putting in your mouth. So try to keep yourself full in other ways. I always start my day with protein oatmeal. It's my favorite, I, I love it. It's chocolate peanut butter or chocolate mint protein oatmeal. I will put the recipe below, I just love it so much. <laughs> and it has some protein icing with it. And that pretty much keeps me full for a while and I just try to be mindful. And I know it's easier said than done by saying don't eat cake, don't eat cookies, eat your vegetables, but you have to make it part of your routine. Like anything, it's really hard when you first start maybe the first two weeks to a month but after that it becomes a routine like I go to the gym three days a week because it's what I do sometimes I just drive there because it's automatic so a little bit of discipline now will pay off later and also I just got done yesterday doing a 36 hour fast a water fast and I try to do that about once a month or every other month it just helps me reset my body like a lot of times I know if I'm starting to eat some salty foods or whatnot, I start holding on to a lot of water weight and I can lose, one time I lost like seven pounds of water weight just after fasting, doing a water fast for 36 hours. And that is just drinking a bunch of water. Now you are going to be going to the bathroom all of the time. However, I just love it because it's a way to clean out my body and help reduce inflammation. And there's tons of benefits like autophagy kicking in and your body cleaning out old bad cells and replacing them with new ones. And I know I sound stupid because I'm not a doctor or anything. So definitely look into doing fast. You don't want to start with a 36 hour fast like I do. Start slow and work your way up. But I've seen so many benefits and it does help me keep my weight under control. On to number eight. I would like to get your opinion. What are the disadvantages of having a client pick up their cakes instead of delivering them? So I have videos where I talk about how to pack up a cake for delivery and how to handle refrigerated cakes. And I'm going to link that in the description. However, there are some rules. Rules. Anybody see Eddie Murphy? Wrong. Rules. Lillian. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm showing my age right now, but anyway. I always tell people to not have the heat on the floor while the cake is down on the floor. You can't have the heat directed down onto the cake or else the cake is going to melt. In the summertime, the air conditioner has to be on blast. There has to be a flat surface. I have this whole entire sheet that I send to people letting them know how to drive with cakes and I will link that in the description. However, 
Once the cake leaves your hands, you don't know what your customer is going to do with it, i.e. like that lady that I told you who mishandled her cake, the cake fell apart and she blamed me for it. So a big disadvantage is that the customers don't always handle your cake with care as much as you would. And I do tell people, take the cake right to the venue, don't stop at Target, don't stop and get gas. You wanna get it right to the venue as soon as possible. I even had someone one time Oh my gosh, I wish I saved the email so I could show it to you, but this lady texted me after her party and told me on the way to the party, we had to slam on the brakes and the cake went flying. I suggest that you protect your cakes a little bit better so they don't get messed up in the, during the transport. I was like, lady, what, what you want me to put a bubble around your cake? Don't slam on the brakes. So give some extra room between you and the car in front of you. It's like, do I have to tell you this? But that's a big disadvantage. People don't really handle their cakes with care as much as you would. However, delivering a cake can be a big pain in the butt. So most of the time, I prefer for people to pick up their cakes and I really don't have that many issues with it. So it's really important to educate your customers on how to drive with their cakes. And again, I will link the little sheet that I give to my customers in the description. On to question number I have a seven quart mixer. Can I just four times the recipe all at once in my mixer? And this question is in regards to making a lot of buttercream icing. And I have a video where I show you how I make a huge bowl of icing and I'm gonna link that in the description. And in that video, I have two KitchenAid stand mixers and I make three batches separately and then I add all three batches to one bowl and turn it on high and it basically beats out all of the air bubbles. And I learned that from Sharon Zambito. She's my mentor and I love her so much. So big ups to Sharon, but anyway. <laughs> so the reason I do that is because it makes a huge mess. I don't like to make, I, I have five quart bowls and my mixers are over there so I'm staring at them. <laughs> but I have five quart bowls if I try to make two batches of icing at one time in a five quart bowl, the sugar goes everywhere. And yes, you could cover the top, you can do different things. If you wanna do that, that's fine. I just don't like to do it that way. I like to make them separately and, and then add all of the finished icing to a bowl and whip all of the air out. So just because I do it this way doesn't mean that you have to. I just show you guys what works for me. So I think that's it. I hope this helped you guys out. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them below. And just a reminder, I do have a PDF with all of my recipes. I have my best scratch pound cake recipes, my doctored cake mix recipes, all of the filling recipes that I use, along with my favorite numbers and my favorite fonts PDFs. So all of those will be linked down below for you. I do have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. I will link all of that information below. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you could check out my website. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one.